Hi, Paul here from GenXMix.com with today's celebrations in a quick journey down memory lane for March 7, 2024. Today is National Slam the Scam Day. This annual event is dedicated to raising awareness about scams and empowering individuals to protect themselves against fraudulent activities. Today, people are encouraged to educate themselves about common scams and share their knowledge with others to prevent them from falling victims to scams. Participants of National Slam the Scam Day are encouraged to take proactive steps, such as researching suspicious emails, calls, or messages before responding and reporting any scams they encounter to the appropriate authorities. The day serves as a reminder to stay vigilant and cautious when sharing personal information or engaging in financial transactions, both online and offline. Through education, awareness, and action, National Slam the Scam Day aims to reduce the prevalence of scams and empower individuals to safeguard their financial and personal information. It serves as a collective effort to combat fraud and protect communities from falling prey to deceptive schemes. National Hospitalist Day celebrates the vital role of hospitalists in healthcare. Hospitalists are physicians who specialize in the care of hospitalized patients, coordinating their treatment from admission to discharge. They work directly for hospitals or healthcare organizations, collaborating with specialists, nurses, and other healthcare professionals to provide comprehensive care to patients during their hospital stay. Hospitalists make a significant difference by improving patient outcomes, reducing hospital readmissions, and enhancing the efficiency of healthcare delivery. Their expertise in managing complex medical cases and coordinating care transitions ensure that patients receive timely and high-quality treatment, leading to better recovery and overall healthcare experience. National Hospitalist Day recognizes and honors the dedication and contribution of these healthcare professionals to patient care and hospital medicine. National Cereal Day is a crunchy celebration of everyone's favorite breakfast staple. On this day, cereal lovers across the world unite to celebrate those colorful boxes that bring joy to our mornings. From classic favorites like Frosted Flakes to more adventurous blends like Lucky Charms, there's a cereal for every taste bud to enjoy. So grab your bowl and spoon, because it's time to seriously celebrate. Whether you're a milk-first or cereal-first kind of person, let's not start that debate. National Cereal Day is the perfect excuse to indulge in your favorite crunchy concoctions. Just remember, no matter how you pour it, cereal is always a bold move. So let's raise a spoon and toast to cereal, the real MVP of breakfast tables everywhere. Some celebrities that influenced or entertained us Generation Xers celebrating March 7th birthdays include Randy Gus the original drummer for Toad the Wet Sprocket, who was born in 1967. The band formed in 1986 and had a series of hits from the early 90s with songs like Walk on the Ocean, All I Want, and Fall Down. Gus left the band in 2017. Moving on to 1956, we have Brian Cranston, a versatile actor known for his Emmy-winning role as Walter White on the hit series Breaking Bad. Cranston's career spans decades, with memorable performances on TV shows like Malcolm in the Middle and films like Trumbo and Argo. The dedication to his craft and ability to take on complex characters have earned him widespread acclaim and several Emmys, Golden Globe, Saturn, and Screen Actors Guild Awards. Leslie Wonderman was born today in 1962. You might know her better by her stage name, Taylor Dane. Dane is known for her chart-topping hits in the late 80s and early 90s with songs like Tell It To My Heart and Love Will Lead You Back. Peter Wolf, the lead singer for Jay Giles' band, was born today in 1946. Jay Giles was a popular band in the early 80s after the release of their album Freeze Frame that went to number one on the album charts in 1982 due to the successful single Centerfold, which topped the Hot 100 for six weeks. The title track Freeze Frame, and Flamethrower, which got a lot of attention and airplay around Detroit and went to number four on the soul charts. Wanda Sykes was born today in 1964. With stand-up specials, sitcoms, TV, and film roles on her CV, Sykes has solidified herself as one of the funniest and most talented comedians in the business. March 7, 1983 was a big day in music. New Order released the single Blue Monday. 
The single is the band's biggest seller and has several remix versions available. Bananarama released their debut album, Deep Sea Skiving, and Tears for Fears released their debut album, The Hurting. The album contained the single Mad World, which would break into the top 10 on the UK charts. A few years later, the song would hit in the US when it was used in the movie Donnie Darko. The Professor of Rock recently dedicated an entire video to the song and its history. I'll place a link to the video in the show notes. The Disney film Jungle to Jungle with Tim Allen and Sam Huntington opened today in 1997. I thought the movie about a boy raised in the jungle and brought to New York was okay. Other viewers didn't think so, though, and Jungle to Jungle was nominated for Worst Picture at the 1997 Stinker Movie Awards. In 1975, David Bowie released the album Young Americans. The album is cited by many popular groups in the 80s and 90s as being influential, and the song Fame is sampled on several tracks by groups like Jay-Z, Public Enemy, Sir Mix-a-Lot, Two Live Crew, and House of Pain. If the line, There Can Be Only One, brings images of sword-wielding immortals fighting each other for world domination, you've likely watched the movie Highlander, or one of its sequels or TV spinoffs. The original movie that started it all, Highlander, with Christopher Lambert and Sean Connery, premiered today in 1986. Even with an awesome soundtrack with songs by Queen, the dark action fantasy movie wasn't very popular at the box office, but it quickly became a cult classic when it was released on VHS. If you've never seen it, I suggest watching the director's cut. It contains a scene that addresses some important plot points, including how Connor and Rachel met. The Beastie Boys appeared on today's episode of Soul Train in 1987. They played their hit Brass Monkey, and Don Cornelius loved it. The same day, their album License to Ill would hit number one on Billboard's 200. Not only was this the first rap album to hold the number one spot on the album 200 chart, it would stay there for seven weeks. On March 7, 2003, the movie Bringing Down the House with Queen Latifah, Eugene Levy, Missy Pyle, and Steve Martin opened in U.S. theaters. All but one musical on Broadway are canceled as the Broadway Musicians Union goes on strike over producers' suggestion of using recorded music for live performances. And In the Club by 50 Cent was number one on Billboard's Hot 100. Thanks for taking a trip down memory lane with me. If you enjoyed hearing about today's celebrations and reminiscing about the songs, movies, and television from our past, consider giving back via the link in the description or buymeacoffee.com slash Paul Taylor. Thanks for your support. I look forward to joining you again tomorrow for more Generation X nostalgia on Gen X Mix today.